BVIP. Can the honorable member explain the, the term BVIP? Very, very important persons. I ask this question because whenever we go to Meghalaya houses, Delhi or Kolkata, we always get the reply from staffs that so, so, and so room are books for retired judges for this and that. The house to order. Let us take up question number 56. Minister in charge to reply, please. Honorable Speaker, sir, reply to star question 56A, sir. One, secretarial assistance and the domestic help allowances, Chief Justice, 50,000 per month, judges 40,000 per month. Two, medical facilities, sir. Full medical reimbursement as applicable to the sitting judge under the Meghalaya Medical Attendance Rules 2021 in all empaneled hospitals. B, sir. Yes. C, sir. Yes. Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to express my gratitude to the Minister in Charge Law for the reply. My supplementary question is, do the retired judges continue to be VVIP after retirement? So, VVIP? Can the Honourable Member explain the, the term BVIP? Very, very important persons. I ask this question because whenever we go to Meghalaya houses, Delhi or Kolkata, we always get the reply from staffs that so, so and so room are books for retired judges for this and that. So that is why I want to know, do they continue to be as VIP as they are during the service? Honorable Speaker, sir, uh, it is a gesture of the state of government, uh, the government of Meghalaya. We are mandated, sir, to maintain these, these uh, statuses of... Mr. Speaker, sir. Please continue with your next supplementary. So the next supplementary that I want to ask is, if a judge, question number C, comes to give their service to the Meghalaya High Court with three months left for service, if we have to maintain and deliver all the perks and facilities for a small state like Meghalaya, I feel in due course it will be a big burden. Can this house review the facilities provided or maybe set certain conditions as who is entitled the duration of service when they give it to the High Court of Meghalaya? The time frame. That is my question, sir. Honorable Speaker, sir. All of these facilities accorded to justices and judges of the High Court are mandated by an Act of Parliament, sir. We are committed to these obligations. And further, sir, several Supreme Court judgments have also uh, recommended for these, for these uh, necessary interventions. Sir. Yes, but Charles, please. Sir, in the case of the second supplementary raised by the Honourable Member, Dr. Sidistin, may I know then, sir, in the case of a retired justice or a chief justice, what is the warrant of precedence vis-à-vis -vis a chief justice, a retired justice and an Honourable MLA of the Legislative Assembly? So, to give a very uh, correct information on this, I will require notice. <coughs> um, I, I agree that the information is not available with the Honourable Minister. But to my knowledge, sir, I, any retired person cannot, uh, by a warrant of precedence, 
cannot supersede the seniority, the seniority or, the, or the entitlement above a member of the National Assembly. It has happened in the past to many colleagues of ours in the House that when they go to the Meghalaya houses in different parts of the country, they have been refused accommodation. I mean, they have been shifted to some other accommodation because it has been reserved for the former justice. Perhaps the government would like to look into this and verify whether the warrant of precedence allows that or not. Point noted, Honourable Speaker, sir.